Yeah, no, yeah, so correction, not 30 yards. That's obviously crazy. I wasn't thinking. Um, it's actually 112.7 yards per game. That ranks them the 11th. The pass yards per game they give up is 246.4, 22nd, and then 359.1 yards in total every game, which is 21st in the league. Do you think that as Bill Belichick does every single season, and we've seen him do it, where he has some little like scheme planned up, he has something cooking, he has somebody not like he has like weird stuff going on to try to throw the other team off or try to get them. We saw um, one of the big things I've seen this year is he hasn't used Gronk a lot, right? That's what everyone's talking about. Gronk's been really bad fantasy wise. They haven't used him that much. So do you think he's doing something like that? I guarantee Gronk's going to go off in the Super Bowl because nobody's expecting him anymore. He did it in the championship game. He's had a, he didn't have a great game, but he did something. So do you think it's the same thing with his defense? Do you think he has something with his defense? He wants his defense to look like they like can kind of stop people. Do you think he's like doing that? Because I, honest, I honestly think he like has saved Gronk as a weapon for the Super Bowl. I really do. So do you Wait, think that's something that, with his defense? Ask me about Gronk or the defense. No, I'm just bringing Gronk up as a point. Do you uh, – so like here's the question, right? Uh-huh. Do you think like he's probably doing now with Gronk, do you think he's saving his defense – Till the Super Bowl, to where they're now going to show up and play this outrageous defense that they just haven't been doing. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I mean, of course he's going to have a game plan, but I don't think this defense is going to do well. I don't think either defense is going to do particularly well. Yeah, of course he's going to try to scheme against this offense, but you can't scheme against this offense. This offense is too good. There's too many weapons. True. Well, do you think he's doing what he's doing with... Um, do you think I'm right about what he's doing with Gronk, at least? I, I, don't, I don't buy that. I, I don't think Gronk's bad production has anything to do with coaching. Just the dude's been plagued with injuries. Well, yeah, he has. But even when he was played with injuries last year, he still had a great... He still played pretty good last year. Even when he was played with injuries. I, I don't know. I, I don't particularly buy, buy that. I, I want to, like, here's my thing, right? I think, yeah, obviously it's a little outrageous, right? That, that sounds is crazy. crazy. Yeah, it is, right? It's pretty, it's kind of crazy. But you don't think that that's something Belichick can do? He does this all the time against teams. You've seen him. He throws out something that stops them, and it's just crazy, like how they can't do this anymore. This team that was so good at this, they literally can't do it anymore. And he pulls out that third and fourth quarter offense and defense on the team where they can't score anymore, like exactly with the Atlanta Falcons. They stopped scoring. Brady just kept scoring every drive. So I, he's done it before. He does it. He lulls teams in his false sense of security, and then he snaps them, and he plays a great game. Yeah, he's going to have a game plan, but I'm not going to say he held Gronk out. You never know. You never know, man. I think Grant's going to have a great game because no one's expecting. Am I? Okay. I'm not totally saying he's like, okay, Gronk, you should just fake an injury. I'm not saying he did that. I know Gronk's been injured, and I know he's had some bad games where he just hasn't played well. Maybe he's being a little bit cautious. But I guarantee Belichick talked to him a little bit, said, hey, we want you to be healthy for when we hit the playoffs. We want you to be healthy for when we hit the Super Bowl. Why don't you – do your routes this game. Why don't you just do your stuff, but we're just going to give you less touches. I guarantee you talk to Gronk like that, and Gronk said something and said it's fine. So why not just have him on the bench more? Why put him out at all? Have him just block. He's really good at blocking. It's not risking much injury. I don't know. I Maybe. What you're saying now and what you said before is different. Well, no, but you, you interpreted it differently. If you're saying, I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he held out Gronk. I'm saying Gronk's going to have a great game because he hasn't got a lot of touches, and he's going to be a secret weapon of Belichick's. Belichick does control the touches he gets per game. He does, like every player, he does. Exactly when they took out the safety, uh, it was Malcolm Butler, right? I think it was. They just threw him out of the game. Belichick can control if Gronk plays or not. I'm not saying he that did. That makes more sense. I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying 
Gronk didn't have a lot of touches this year, a lot less than he had last year. He definitely had a lot less fantasy production than last year. I'm not saying he totally got thrown out, but I guarantee from a lot of the injuries that happened and all that stuff, Belichick was like, just wait. You'll get your touches in the Super Bowl, the playoffs. You'll win another ring. Just wait. I guarantee that's what happened. There's no way you have Gronk on your team as a tight end and he throws up nothing for you on a team that was struggling in the beginning. Yeah, maybe he just lost the step, though. I don't think so. I think so. that's in the realm of possibility. Well, then, yeah, but I, I just don't think that. I, I, can't, I can't see a position where he's doing so bad that the Patriots are like, okay, why don't we try somebody else out at tight end? They, they, they did it. They've done it. They had a great safety, and they just threw him out. They didn't care. They wouldn't play him because he was bad with the team. And he wasn't like, they'll, they'll throw him out for They'll throw people out. They, they don't care. I I'm, not say, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it happens. Wait, what was that? I think he's just missing the step. I think the, the back injuries are catching up with him. Well, yeah, uh, but last, but last game he pulled it out of his ass to have a nice game. He's, he's never going to be the same guy that he was. He can't be. No, I don't think he will be, but he did have a great game against Kansas City. He got some key plays that need to be had. I think he's going to get a few touchdowns this game, for sure. You think he yeah. gets a few touchdowns? I think he gets two. Over, under three for Rob Gronkowski touchdowns. <laughs> I say, I say under. Under? I, yeah, I think under too. Honestly, I don't, I don't see a point where Julian Edelman doesn't score a lot or Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhard, or Burkhead, sorry, uh, White. I don't, see, I don't see a point where any of those guys don't get at least a touchdown or two. I think Michelle will have two touchdowns. I think Burkhead will have one. That's three right there, and I think Gronk will have one or two. Yeah. I don't think... I, I did say, I did say um, what was my thing? 31-27, right? <laughs> so you can have all your touchdowns. Um, you can have, you can have right there, you have 28 is four touchdowns. So you can have two, one, one or two, field goal. Yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's 100% possible. And here's something I want to bring up, too. The Rams' defense isn't much better. 122.3 yards per game. They're doing 23rd. 236. This is the better stat, though. 236.2 pass yards. They're 14th on that. That's a big jump from uh, what the uh, Patriots have again. They gave up, what was it, like 260, I think it was, or something like that? Around 300. Yeah, yeah, they were close. They were definitely close. And then all the yards per game, they're ranked 19th with 358.6. So, you know, here's my prediction, 100%. Obviously, we like every... Predictions. Huh? We went over these predictions. No, 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 I know that. But, I mean, here's my predictions for the Rams' defense, though. We were talking about Aaron Donald. We were talking about Sanu. We said they would do a great job, all that, right? Not Sanu, Sue. Sue, Sue. I don't know why I thought Sanu. Sanu passed away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did he, actually? Hmm. That's a shame. When did that happen? You didn't hear about the Muhammad Sanu? I did not. Oh, no, never mind. I think I'm thinking of the wrong guy. You definitely are. I don't think Sanu's dead, no. Does he play for the... Yeah, no, yeah, no. Sanu Sr. died. Yeah, but... Well, I heard about that. You know, you, Sanu, though, didn't, I don't think. No, never mind. Forget Scared the hell out of me, man. Jesus, that man's a... God, that man is going to be... Sure, I, listen, he's, he's, he's amazing. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I think he just has such outstanding character, such outstanding way he plays, how he is with his team, how he is with his fans. I feel like he's going to be a top guy. He had like just just his character is fantastic. But anyway, um, so Sue, you said right? I don't know why I thought Sunu. I thought I thought you said Sunu at first, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's the guy. But okay, I said Aaron Donald, Sue. They're going to have some good touch. Sorry, good uh, sacks and all that, right? <laughs> I think. Brady has a terrible game, and they can still win. I'm not saying they're going to, but if they had to win, Brady is going to have a bad game. And Wait, Michelle, if, saying, if the Rams, you're saying the Patriots can win, and Brady can have a bad game? Yes, the running game they have is so good that yeah, I could see. Uh, I could see where 
Brady is sub 250, sub 240 with no touchdowns and an interception or two. And I could see that happening, and they still win because of their running game. Oh, I don't buy that. I can see that happen. I can, uh, I can definitely see that happen. How oh, we've seen defenses, we've seen um, defenses and running backs win games before. Why, yeah. you know, why, why wouldn't change now? Von Miller with the uh, Peyton Manning Super Bowl, he held, the, he saved that team. And then Marshawn Lynch would have saved his team if you know they didn't throw the ball on that last play. But you know, whatever. <laughs> Worst fucking call ever. <laughs> Still tight about that game, by the way. That was a sad game. So the idol hasn't been the same since. No. And you know what? I don't blame him. Speaking of bad calls. Oh, okay. Wait, is there anything gonna... you want to add before you get to this new topic? I would love because to go we... to the new topic. I think, I think we covered a lot. I think we, we covered a lot. On for about 40 minutes on this first topic. <laughs> <laughs> I think we covered a lot. So why don't we start speeding up a little bit? Made some comments against Roger Goodell. Ooh, really? About his lack of response about the bad call. Johnny, you get first take. He did take 10 days. He took 10 days. Silent. Only reason he spoke, and I believe this is in Brady's word, was because he asked to make an announcement for the Super Bowl. He had to go talk at the, I think it was like the Player Awards or whatever it was. Um, that was happening, and he had to go. He had to go up there, and he had to talk, and that's why he talked about the call. But I think Brad, that's exactly what not Brady. Sorry, that's exactly what um, exactly what Drew Brees said. I believe I'm, I'm not like correct, but like I'm ninety five percent sure. My opinion on it is he knew it was a terrible call. I think everyone knew it was a terrible call. Um, my opinion is if that call was not made, Saints would have won. I think, however, the way the game ended up, Yo, you obviously, said if that call was not made, the Saints would have won. Sorry, you know oh, what I mean. Like if that if that call if that call was made, you okay. know you know what I meant. They didn't they didn't mess up. They didn't I'm mess just, up not calling it. I'm just <laughs> making sure I'm understanding. That's all. I know. I know. Okay. I'm saying if they made they if they made sure that that call was made, then Saints would have won, no doubt. However, I'm not saying that it's bad that the Rams won because here's here's the flip. You get the ball back in OT, right? How do you not? And how do you not score when you have the ball in OT if you're a Super Bowl team? I don't care what anyone says. I didn't know that was a terrible call. I can't believe. Sorry, I know that was a terrible missed call. I keep saying call. They never made a call, but you know, I know it was. A, I think it was a terrible missed call. I think that those officiating crew should be put on the back burner and taught how to do their job because that was awful. And But I, I have to say, if I'm Drew Brees, uh, I am mad that the commissioner took 10 days. I am mad that there was no call. But exactly, I think he talked about it too. You had your chances as a player, as a quarterback, as a leader, and you messed it up in OT. Here's the thing. I'm going to... I'm going to touch on all your points. The first point, taking it took 10 days. And Drew Brees felt that he said something because he felt like he had to, right? Yeah. But like, what do you want the man to say? Like, messed up. Say it immediately. Say it the day after. Say, I messed up. We made a mistake. We'll go through it in the future. We, he didn't make a mistake. He's the owner. Doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter if you have a bad shipping label, right? Or if you mess up as a company, doesn't it always go to the top person? A mistake that happens isn't or may not happen because of you, but you're a part of that franchise, and therefore you're a part of it. If you're on the team and your quarterback messes up and you're on the defense, you still say something, and okay. you say we didn't like get it done. Says, uh, we messed up, but like okay, like I wouldn't want to hear that. Well, no, but like I you want something. Did. But you want something, don't you? I mean, I guess. He has to say something. It was one of the worst no calls ever. I don't think anything tops it. I really don't. I can't think of one other call that really tops that and is like, wow, that was terrible. Like, that was the worst no call ever. He got hit before the ball was even in the vicinity. 
if you say the ball's in the vicinity, the guy who's hitting him never even looks at the ball. And I believe you have to look at the ball to make a hit. By the way, if he looked at the ball, that's an interception, and we're not even having this conversation. We won it. We won it. Exactly. But unless Roger Goodell comes out and says, we are allowed, you are allowed to review pass interference and false start penalties, I don't want to hear anything else he has to say. Well, I guess that's what Breeze wanted, honestly. If, if, if I want Roger Goodell to come out and say penalties such as pass interference and false starts are reviewable. Unless he says that, I don't want to hear it. Anything well, see, else coming here's, out the, here's the thing I got to ask you, right? When you make that reviewable, right? When you do make that reviewable. You get two challenges and pass interference and false starts fall under those two challenges. Do you think if you do that, though, that any penalty should be reviewable? No. I think Because I feel like if you make two penalties reviewable, you got to make everything reviewable. You should make it. Why not? Why not? Um, why not calls on you hit it like exact? This is something that happened in the Kansas City Patriots game. One of the uh, roughing the passers. You, you, I, you watched the game, right? That was probably worse than the pass interference. It was. It was huh? very bad. It was very bad. If uh, if you guys didn't watch it, try to look back on it. Um, it's on YouTube. It has to be honestly at this point. Uh, he literally touches his shoulder maybe with his arm. It was like it was like the dumbest thing ever. Like when I say touch his shoulder, I mean like he literally just taps it. Like he does nothing else. One of the worst calls ever. Too. Like it was a very bad call. They call it pass interference, and that's honestly would help the Patriots like so much. But shouldn't that be reviewable then? I don't think so. That's different. No, but how? It's the same thing as a pass interference. No, it's not. Yeah, well, well, if you make pass interference able to be called, right? What if a pass interference happens and you want to review it to say it's not pass interference? Yeah, pass interference is worth a lot more. Okay, so why wouldn't you say if somebody actually roughed the passer, um, but it wasn't called, why wouldn't you be able to challenge that? It's not worth as much. Yeah, it is. It's worth a first down. It's not worth a first. Yeah, it is. I think it's five yards and a first down. Is it five yards and a first? Yeah, I think it is. I can look it up real quick, actually. Let me Let me check. Let me check. Uh, you keep talking, though. You keep talking, though. I'm just saying, you take the two most missed called penalties, make them reviewable. That's not my only point. Well, but I, I just don't see, I just don't see a point where that happens. And yeah. you're like, okay, those are the only two to be re- reviewed, and that's it, and everyone being okay with that. Because oh. you should. Re- oh, by the way, it's 15 yards. Or half a distance to the goal, and then it's a first down. Yeah, that is major. Okay, you that is very that. big. That is very big. Like that's like that. That's what helped them. So yeah, that like that's why I think if you have something like that going on, I think you have to make all penalties. You just you just make everything reviewable in this game. You make anything and everything reviewable, because I don't see a point in making ever a uh, pass interference. And um, false starts reviewable, or encroachment for that matter, and then you don't somehow make roughing the passer, or um, other things like that. I feel like those have to be too uh, holding penalties, all of that. There's some there's some bad holds that happen too. Yeah, holding happens so much. No, yeah, all you got all, all that happens is you get caught as an O line person. That's it. <laughs> um, what else was I gonna say? Or. Well, we could just do what's. We could just stop denying the inevitable and make referees robots and take the human eye out of football and baseball for that matter. Umpires and NFL refs make them robots. We'll see. Now this is where I kind of differ, right? On a play like that, it's a terrible call, and it changed the it changed what happened, and it's terrible. It was a no call, and there was a call. It happened to both games both were bad both should have never, never happened or well one of them should have happened the other shouldn't have, obviously one of the things i see though that is that some things that happen in a sport that's constituted as a penalty right 
do need to be judged to a variable degree by the referee. And if you have just a robot doing it, yeah, you can kind of set a certain standard, but unless it doesn't reach that standard exactly, it's robotic. It's going to be like, okay, he has to do it to this amount of percentage. Otherwise, it's not a penalty. And yeah, that's very that's hard. But, but that's very hard. That's very hard to do. And if you have robots in, how are you gonna how are you gonna judge roughing the passer? What what has to happen there? Does the ball have to be like what what are you gonna do? Is it like just touching them or is it just knocking them to the ground? Like what what are you gonna call? And how are you gonna have like robots do that? I feel like having a referee is good because you need a human instinct. Of, they have hundreds of cameras anyway. Let's just well, yeah. use what the technology that the game already has and let's make it better. Well, yeah, but you have certain roughing the passer penalties that happen, right? That don't happen to other uh, players. There was a terrible hit on Josh Allen this year, right? Not called as roughing the passer. Should have been. And then there was a play with um, Ben Roethlisberger, right? And he got hit. I forget who he got hit by. He got hit by somebody after the ball was already released. And the guy said sorry halfway through the tackle. Didn't even finish the tackles. Kept saying sorry. Went to the ground and said sorry again. He didn't even mean to hit him. He was trying to pull back, but his momentum kept him going. It, was, it shouldn't have been a pass interference. Sorry, not pass interference. It shouldn't have been rough in the passer. So how are you going to solve that? I just think it's really hard to do, and unless like, you can really do it, you're not. It's always variable degrees. I don't think it is a variable. I think it is. I think personally, it's you look at it, and there's so many different roughing the passer calls that you look at it and you're like, well, how do we judge what roughing a passer is? You can't hit the quarterback after the ball is released. Yeah, they say that, right? Yeah. But if you're already hitting them right at the ball release, sometimes they don't call that. Or if you're hitting them after maybe even a little bit of a second and your momentum keeps you going, some people don't call that. Forward momentum's different. Yeah. But how do you get um, a computer to judge for what's forward momentum or what's a player actually just doing it? Or maybe huh? somebody pushed them or not. Let's you for that. Or does somebody just push them? How do you input all this? You, you can. I know if you can. If someone just pushes him, that's roughing the passer. No, I'm saying what if one of your own players on your team pushes him into you? How oh. are they even going to look? How are they even going to look to see if that saying. happened? Are the robots going to understand that that's not roughing the passer because the guy pushed them? Are they going to even compute that in the system? Yes, absolutely. Really? Because we've seen that happen, and even referees don't even like look at it. And like, oh, he ran into the quarterback after the play. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, the referees do that because they're blind. They're 60-year-old old men. Why are you having that? I don't think it's going to work. I, judge the I, game. Really, I don't think it's going to work. I think there's too much from a computer perspective that's not going to be put in just due to the fact that it's not going to have all of the things. Now, and somebody from the NFL who's telling these referees what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do, right? If he's the guy who's telling them what to do and what not to do and how the calls work, right? And he's the one going to tell that and program that into the robots, the stuff he's not thinking about that the referees aren't thinking about aren't going to be put in. And then you're going to have to fix that, and you're going to have to fix that. I think no matter what, it's going to be bad calls or good calls. And I think you don't take out the human perspective for referees, because that's crazy. And can I throw in one conspiracy? Oh, my God. Go go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> All, everybody has biases. Just going to leave that out there. Yep. That's it. Just throwing it out there. They do. I'm not, I'm not saying they don't. I'm just... Just going <laughs> to... That ref man, maybe the only Patriots fan in Kansas City that day. I you know, just gonna throw that out there. Maybe just threw him a bone. Well, there's other referees just gonna there. Throw that out there. That's why I don't blame just one referee. Every referee on that field missed a missed a call and made a bad call. Every referee yeah. on the field. Maybe those refs, they were all Rams fans. <laughs> I think you're asked before you ref the thing if you're a fan of the team, by the way. I think they look at everything and check. I don't, I don't think like that happens. But you know what? Basically, there were some bad calls in both games. However, Super Bowl is Super Bowl. We had our predictions in, and that's it. Jumping from that, All however, I'm saying is, just one last point. If you say bias again, if you I wish I could your, smack you in the face. <laughs> you want your ratings to come back up to where they should be 
the NFL has to do something about these referees. I don't think that's stopping people from watching, though. It's no make- one's going to not watch the Super Bowl because of those bad calls. It's making the product worse, man. Yeah, but nobody's going to not watch the Super Bowl. It's going to hurt them. Who doesn't man. watch the Super Bowl? Last year it hit. Last year it broke viewership. It's going to break it again. I don't see it not breaking. I don't see it not breaking record viewing. It did it last year. It'll do it again. Agree to disagree. Okay, we'll see. You know, so I'm going to call nothing? you out on this tomorrow. So wait, 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 wait. You're just saying nothing has to be done. Is that no, no, I'm saying sense? something should be done, but that's I don't think. That's all. But I'm I don't saying. think viewership dropped. I think you have to change the referees because they were bad. You have to fix things. You have to make sure calls are made. But viewership's not dropping because of it. It's just making angry. Fans, that's it. I think in the long run it will. I don't think so, though. I think next year, or I think even this year, I'm gonna, uh, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, as soon as the Super Bowl, as soon as I'm watching it, I'm going to look up viewership count, and I'm going to call you, and I'm going to be like, hey, by the way, it just broke record viewership, and I just want to see what you said, because I think I'm right. I'm not talking about the Super Bowl. I'm talking about the season overall. I think people will still watch, and it just won't show because a lot of people don't watch on the channel. Like, let, let's be honest here, okay? Do you have a cable subscription, or do you just kind of, like, look up game scores or, like, try to watch highlights? I look up game scores. Well, no, I go to the bar. You go to the bar? Okay. So, like, people, that's only, there could be 20 people in the bar, right? Mm-hmm. It's only counted as one viewer. Right? But that's not... So, but no, what I'm saying is, though, if viewership's going down, I don't think it's because of that. I think viewership goes down just because people find new ways to uh, watch the games, whether well, like it's streams, whether it's at a friend's house, whether it's going to the bar. Viewership drops. It just, I don't know how they scale it, but it drops because of that. Well, I think what I'm saying is I think you're going to see a substantial drop more than just people cutting cable. I don't think you will. Unless I think unless unless it's from cutting cable or changing stuff, I don't think a drop's happening. I don't think it's that bad because listen, there's been bad calls throughout the NFL. This isn't something new. This is a bad one. Yes. This isn't something new. And viewership has dropped. But it hasn't. And it's gonna continue dropping. But it hasn't dropped. They broke record last year. Record viewing ship. I can I can even look up the numbers for you. I think the Super Bowl broke record viewing. I'm not talking about the Super Bowl. But I'm it counts. About the, the season as a whole. Well, I don't know. Because do you have those numbers? No. I don't no. have the numbers. No. You don't have the numbers. You could say it, but until we see the numbers, I don't think it's true. I, I honestly, I just don't see if it's true. Like, I really just don't. Okay, my mistake, my mistake, my mistake. 2017, it broke viewership. Yeah. Wait, is that last year? No, no, that's 2018, it would be. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not, but it's not a substantial drop, by the way. I just looked. It's not a substantial drop. (laughs) Anyway, though, getting off this topic, because we're not going to agree on it, and I'm not going to agree. I think it's terrible calls. I'm not saying nothing should be done. I'm just saying, I don't think it's changing. If Roger Goodell doesn't say we're replacing the refs with robots, he hasn't, I don't want to hear anything. What are you saying, (laughs) man? Moving on, something a little bit off sports. I'm actually, well, something just more about the Super Bowl in general, a little bit of of pop culture there. Uh, Cardi B did not want to play the Super Bowl because she wants to stay loyal to Colin Kaepernick and what he did. What What do you think about that? Well, there's a few things I want to talk about. Just branching off this topic. Um, Let me turn my phone back on. There's something I posted about, and I can't remember the dude's name. Of course, of course. I'll I'll talk while you look for it real quick. Uh, I'll I'll say what I personally think really quick. It's not going to take too long. So something that I personally think about it is he did what he did. Wait, did I just stop the recording? No, no, no. Recording's still going. Okay. So Austin is recording the call. Perfect. Okay. I think I think um, he did what he wanted to do. 
he made a statement like everyone else, right? And I think he made a statement and he could stick by his statements, obviously. I have my personal viewings about it. I'd say that's totally fine. If you want to um, talk about what's happening and talk about how there's a lot of discrimination and stuff going on. And he is right. There's a lot of bad stuff going on against black people. And it's a really, it's a really terrible to see. I don't think, I personally don't think, I think he could have said something at a press conference maybe. I think he could have done something after or before the game. I just think kneeling during the national anthem where it's something that's mostly the national anthem, the way I see it is that we're, pra- um, we're praising troops and we're praising um, the country that, you know, we live in right now. Um, and obviously where it's mostly towards like people who are fighting for us and all of that, because that's what we're doing. That's kind of what the song talks about, um, you know. So I think it's kind of hard to see somebody kneeling during something that's like, you know, supposed to praise the troops and stuff and praise a country where they live. And obviously some stuff in the country with law enforcement is obviously messed up and it's happening. There's a lot of discrimination going on and is messed up. But I just think kneeling during the Pledge of Allegiance was I just don't think that's the right call. He's allowed to do it. Free country. You can do whatever you want. It's his business. I'm honestly, you know, him doing it and him standing by what he did. Good for him. Uh, I just personally think that he could have done it a different way. And that's just something I believe in. So I believe Cardi B stepping by and saying, okay, I don't want to play this because of him. It's totally fine. She's allowed to do that. She made a choice. She wants to be loyal and it's totally fine. And for her doing that, I can see why she did it. It's kind of okay that she did that. Okay. I agree with everything you just said, but okay. there's a few things that I, I don't like about this situation. There is a narrative that is being pushed that is completely, completely, completely false, and I want to debunk it right now. What is that? Saying Colin Kaepernick was blackballed from the NFL is false. It is it is false. It is. He was I know what offered, you're talking about. He was offered to play in Denver. He was he offered was. to play in Baltimore and yes. he said no. Yes. So this false narrative saying he's blackballed from the NFL is a lie. It is. He is he definitely is not blackballed. He was offered to play. His team may have not wanted it. His team may have not wanted it, cause uh, and that's why they cut him. But I think they did they cut him or release him. I think they're the same thing. But I think he did. one. I forget. I think cutting is just like knocking you off the roster and releasing is just kind of saying bye. I forget what it is. Um, but he definitely he was offered by two teams, as you just said, Baltimore and Denver, and he said no. And but here's the thing, though. I think the reason he said no. Is because of didn't he get fined by the NFL? Didn't the NFL fine people for kneeing? I think so. Because it was yes. certain ratings. Yeah. So I think that when that happened, he still thought the NFL was a bad boogeyman still and was still like, you know, negating his message, which technically they were. They didn't want him to do it during the national anthem. And I can understand why they didn't want him to do it. I can understand. I can really understand, and I personally think he should have done it differently. But As you just said, NFL debunking him didn't happen, but I understand why he didn't want to go play on the team, especially after how the NFL was responding. But that's fine. Don't, but don't say he's blackballed because that's he's not. It's false. Yeah, that's pushing a narrative to make the league look bad, and it's not true. No, it isn't true. But but Cardi B not wanting to play at the Super Bowl, right? Because she wants to stick by um, Colin is not just because. You know, hey, you're not playing at the Super Bowl. Like, you know, like it's like that. You're not playing at the Super Bowl because he's debunked, or sorry, debarred from playing, or barred from playing. Sorry. If she's, um, it's it, she's she's doing it because he just doesn't believe in the NFL at all after what it's doing. If she's saying that she's not playing the Super Bowl in support of Colin Kaepernick's message, that's fine. That's if what I saying, think it is. If she's saying she's not playing the Super Bowl because the NFL blackballed Kaepernick, that's why I have a problem because that's not true. I don't know what version it is. Um, she just said she wanted to stick by Colin Kaepernick. 
And I don't know. I think I'm assuming it's Colin Kaepernick's message. Personally, I have no clue though. I, I don't have an idea about that. But do you agree with what she's doing then? Obviously, as you just said, like as long as it's for that reason. Yeah, as long as he's. She's allowed to. I support yeah. it. I supported Kaepernick when he well, nailed, a, nailed yeah. down. Well, yeah, and it doesn't even matter if she, if we support it or not, if we care about it. She's allowed to do whatever the hell she wants, whatever right. her reasons are. I yeah. just thought it was something okay. interesting. I definitely just thought it was something interesting to bring up. Also, um, just to spring off of this topic, Jay Z was trying to convince Travis Scott not to perform at the Super Bowl. How do you? What's your reaction to Jay Z telling Travis Scott to join this movement and not play? Um. Well, I don't know. Listen. Number one, Jay Z. I have my own issues about that guy, cause he took yeah. all his music. He took all his music off Spotify, and that kills me, cause I wanted to listen to him, cause he did it for his new whatever like music type. Regardless of that fact, um, I think if Travis Scott wants the money, which he can have and wants to play, somebody like Jay Z, who probably has a lot more than Travis Scott does, telling him not to play is kind of, I think, a pretty bad. I think if he's just saying, "Hey, don't play." Or something like that, and like I, I, even then, you don't talk to another man about what he should do or shouldn't do with it, like for his money and stuff. It's his business entirely. I think I, I don't think you should even be talking to him about it. It's the same as um Travis Scott saying, "Hey, don't play over here because they said something like this." Like you stay out of the man's life. Don't talk to him about it. It's his business if he wants to play or not. And just because he's playing there doesn't mean he's going against black people and going against Colin Kaepernick's movement. That's that's just what I think. Stole the words right out of my mouth. That was that was perfect. Sorry, man. Sorry. No, that's good. How about how about I how about I go to something where you can have a good discussion? Ready for this? Because I I think you're I think you're good at the on, on this one. Going from football, we got Knicks trading. With, I believe it was the Dallas Mavericks. Correct. It was the Mavericks. What do you think? Thoughts? You can tell them what, uh, if you want to say what they traded and everything. I want to hear what you think about that. Um, I get it. I get it a lot. Like, what they're trying to do is get Anthony Davis to come in. Because if Anthony Davis comes in, they'll get other attract other players to New York that normally wouldn't be attracted to playing in the dumpster fire that is the New York Knicks. So I think they now have, what, $74 million in cap space? It's up there, yeah. I, I thought it was 90 but yeah. Now, I can't... i going to be honest, I haven't been watching a ton of basketball so if you're gonna ask me from an x's and o's standpoint i really can't talk much on that i'm more of a look at the box score and um play fantasy type basketball fan at this point okay but i will say as a sports fan who's been following sports for a while now completely understand the desire to bring a guy like Anthony Davis and maybe Clay Thompson into your organization and try to form around them. I just don't think it's going to happen. I get the plan, but I think it's they're going to fall flat just because of the recent history with New York. Um, when's the last time the Knicks have been relevant? You know, uh, Patrick Ewing. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not a good look. Unless Patrick Ewing against the Bulls. <laughs> unless Irving and Davis talk about playing together and forming a super team, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, you were right. It's the seventy-three million. My bad. You were, you were exactly right, actually. Um, but yeah, no, if you guys don't know what the trade was, um, so the Mavericks have gotten Trey Burke, 
Court Ely, like Tim Hardaway Jr., and Chris Tabbs Porzingis giving up in exchange Wesley Matthews, DeAndre Jordan, two first round picks, and Dennis Smith Jr. My personal opinion on it, like, uh, honestly, is you have uh, here, here's what I think Porzingis didn't want to be um, a player on the Knicks anymore. He said it, he talked about it, he didn't want to play on the Knicks anymore. So oh, wait, then, wait, wait, I didn't know he said that. Hold on. Oh, yeah. He said he didn't want to play for the Knicks. I didn't realize that. Yeah, no. At first, so I didn't realize the trade. Basically, yeah. He yeah. he said he didn't. He said he didn't want to play. So they were like, okay, we'll just trade him then. So I agree with that. At first, I didn't think about that. Um, I didn't know about it, and then I figured it out. So I think traded. they could have gotten more though. Well, here here's what I'm thinking, right? I I agree with giving up Porzingis. I don't like Courtney Lee, so yeah, get rid of Courtney Lee, whatever. Um, tr- giving up Trey Burke. That was that was a bit iffy for me. I like yeah, Trey Burke. They're, they're going hard for Anthony Davis. Yeah, but, but well, mm-hmm. well, true. Um, my my biggest problem with all this is Tim Hardaway Jr. I don't care what anyone says. He's underrated. He's a fantastic player. He was performing great things on the Knicks, giving up point, giving them points every night, doing great. I think giving up that man's a huge mistake. I understand what they're going for. Okay. They just got DeAndre Jordan and Wesley Matthews and Dennis Smith Jr. If you want to keep Dennis Smith Jr. and DeAndre Jordan and then try to go for a one star, I think you can do the cap space for that and it could work out well. Two great players plus an all-star player joining your team. I think that would be a good team personally. But if you just want to get like keep these guys. I think no, this, I think it's the cap move. I know that, but I think they should, personally. Here's why. You signed DeAndre Jordan and you signed Dennis Smith Jr., right? Let's say you signed them both. You could still probably pick up somebody in the offseason and make it a star team. DeAndre Jordan and Dennis Smith Jr. are nothing to laugh at. They're great players. They play well, they're starters, and they know how to play, and they're veterans. But they're not Anthony Davis and Clay Thompson. Well, hear me out. My personal reality in this is, okay, you get rid of everyone. Fine. If you, This is what you want to do. I have two options here, right? One option. You get rid of everybody the Mavericks sent you, right? Is That's what you want to do. You have two first-round picks for the future. That's going to be fine when you need them, and you can probably use that to trade for somebody else in the future if you want to. Their goal, their only way this works is if KD, Clay Thompson, or Kyrie Irving leave, Anthony Davis joins you, you sign him, and then you have to pick up one of them. That's I the only way I see this working. The only way I see this working is if Davis and Irving want to play together and they agree to sign together, just like Bosch and LeBron did in Miami. And they, they agreed to sign with Dwayne Wade, take a little bit of a pay cut because they think they can win. If they're not coming together, no one's coming to New York. Well, see, you do that. Like, what I'm thinking is you do that, you have... All any of those guys, if but here's the thing that can fail very quickly. First of all, Anthony Davis could just not go to the Knicks. He could be offered a lot more somewhere else with more stars there, and he could just go somewhere else. It could happen. Kyrie Irving could be gone if he wants to be. It doesn't. He's he's hasn't given an answer. One of his things he said is, "See me July 1st. So he's iffy on it. KD, if things aren't fixed, I think Draymond's leaving or KD's leaving. That's happening. Draymond's Clay Thompson, trash. Clay Thompson could want to leave and go somewhere else for a good amount of money. Also, Draymond is not trash, but we'll talk about that another time. Another way I could see this working. There's two ways, as I said, I could see this working. That way is the only way I could see it working with off-season trades. Here's what I see. It's the only way this works. DeAndre Jordan. It's all for one and none well, hear at me all. Out. Hear me out. Hear me out. DeAndre Jordan, Dennis Smith Jr., and you get Zion Williamson in the draft. If you do that, you win. Zion so Williamson is a god. That kid's going to play great when he goes on the team. And everyone knows it. You have a star like DeAndre Jordan at center who can get Zion the ball back if he misses for rebounds and can protect the middle with also Dennis Smith Jr. to nice to be a supplement for points. And you could also get R.J. Barrett if that works out somehow. I don't think it will, but if it could work out, that'd be awesome. I think you can do it without getting offseason guys. I think you can. If you get Zion in, in. if you get Zion in, no, but if you get Zion in, you can get Zion, DeAndre Jordan, and Dennis Smith Jr. I guarantee those guys can do it themselves. 
You got to get one. You don't need him. I don't think you need anybody else. Why? Why would you need anybody else? If Zion can do what he's doing now in the NBA, why would you need anybody else? You, you have got- Andre Jordan. You have Dennis Smith Jr. They're putting up great stats. Why would you need anyone else? You got to get the superstar. I don't think so. Especially, no matter what, if KD leaves and Klay Thompson leaves, Golden State's done. I don't see true? Demarcus Cousins will be out too. I don't see I don't see them doing I, anything. I, I don't see them doing anything. Who do you have? Who do you have then? Steph? It was Steph mm-hmm. and Draymond. Mm-hmm. Is that it? That's your team and you're winning? No. That's not gonna happen. Bye. No, I'm saying Clay would be gone too. Man, I'm saying no. Kevin Durant and Clay gone. I don't think they're both gonna be gone. No, but they can be. Talks of Clay wanting more money and talks of Kevin Durant having unrest. I don't think you lose both. I'm saying you can, though. It can happen. It might happen. If you do lose both, Golden State's done. I wouldn't say that. Kyrie might leave Boston. Anthony Davis goes to another team. But I wouldn't say they're done. They're basically done. You have a lot of stuff moving around. I think that you can do it with your team. I don't think there's going to be uh, – there's a lot of teams right now, and obviously there are not many people have cap space, I don't think. It's going to be weird. It's going to be a different offseason. It's going to be interesting. This is something to really watch. Like, this is going to be the bread and butter. I don't see anybody coming to New York. If, if there's not if, – if Zion gets there, anyone will go there. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't see why no one would go there if Zion gets in. Like, do you not think if like they got Zion, like people would be like, "Holy shit, I got to be on this team"? No, really? Do you you do know who Zion is, right? Yeah, he's a college player. And what he's doing nightly? He's in number co- one. He's number one to leave. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if it's in college. He plays. He's playing fantastic. The three point line is what five feet closer than that. Yeah, but he's also a dunker. Yeah, in college. Against boys. The NBA is grown men. You mean other tall people. You can say whatever you want. Lonzo was a bust, in my opinion. Okay? He was a bust, right? Luka Doncic, not a bust. Zion Williamson, he's not going to be a bust either. There's, there's busts and there's not busts. I I'm think saying. Zion's... I know, but I think Zion's going to be the top guy... If he gets brought to any team, they're going to get people in the offseason. We'll see. Okay. I don't have a whole bunch to say. I'm not a big basketball fan. Fair enough. But I just want to lay out the business plan in the background because I know what's going on. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So. We've gone for almost an hour and a half. I was going to say, do you want to do the last topic? Yes, I do. Because... I'm very adamant about this last one, actually. Okay, okay. Well, for the last topic, um, what we have is Governor Ralph Northman. And this was 30 years ago, by the way. I feel like I have to say that. This was 30 years ago. He was seen in um, a photo. I believe it was in his yearbook, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a yearbook photo, yeah. It's a yearbook photo. I believe it was him. Uh, black is Michael Jackson with um, a hooded figure that looks like he's in the KKK. He put on blackface. Yeah. Call it like it is. Yeah, he did. I'm going to let you go. Because <laughs> if, if you really want to talk, I'm going to let you go first. And I'll, like, basically, that's, that's the setup. So what are, you, what are you thinking? It's very simple. Um, me personally, with my my history of stand up, going and playing bars, I have said some things. I I definitely walk the line with what I say. Now let's just talk about just the photo in general, right? Blackface, horrible thing. Bad, bad, um, just a bad look, right? Yeah. We could both agree on that. I think we 100%. can all agree on that. But 
if we, I I just want to know where you draw the line because everybody are, are people calling for him to resign? Yes, people have already called for him to resign. I just want to say, like, you got to give people to a degree, you know, room to grow. Like, that was a high school photo. And I know I've, I've personally gone through a lot of growth. Like, I'm not the same person I was in ninth grade. Like, that's where do you, do you draw the line? Like, we all say stuff that we regret. We all do things that we regret. And I think there should be ramifications. But, like, digging it up like this, just, I don't know, it seems wrong. Like, if you dig up anything I've said, you know, it would be a bad luck. I'm sure if stuff you got out, stuff that you said that gets out, you know, from ninth grade, it would be a bad luck. Like, we all say that. Say dumb stuff. We all done dumb stuff. So, I think digging and looking for it is, it's a problem because... I don't know. I don't think he should be judged for something he said 30 years ago. That's okay. that's my take. Okay. Um, I agree with most. I, I agree with basically almost all of that. There's um, there's there, here's some things. It did happen 30 years ago. 30 years ago, digging up, it's like digging up skeletons. Okay. Um, it may have been bad. It may have been poor judgment. Very poor judgment. It's a terrible thing to do, obviously. But here's what I'm gonna say real quick, right? We're in 2019, right? Yeah. So we go back 30 years. Where are we? 1989? Mm -hmm. Did I do math right? I don't. I hope you're not going to go Sh after. Shut up. Go. Just, just hear me yes. out. We're in 1989, okay? 1989, I survived. <laughs> <laughs> Good song, actually. Oh, my God, man. That's actually a great song. But, um, okay, we're 1989. And there's a lot of turmoil in the country at that point still. Don't. Just hear me out. I'm not going to. You You see, if you, you don't let me say something, you're not going to know what I'm saying. Okay? Okay. I'm going to. 1964, let you, go, you have the civil. Look 19, like, oh. I'm not. 1964, you have the civil rights movement, right? Mm hmm You basically, you're going up 20, 20, 20, sorry, 25 years, right? Oh, Johnny, don't. Can you hear me out? Because no, you don't know what I'm going to say. I I mean, hope you think I you, you think you do. You're not. You don't know what I'm going to say. Because if I think, can you hear me? Because if you just, say what I think you're going to say, it's going to be very problematic. No, I think you just need to hear me out. Okay. Before you know, you got to shut up. I'll hear you. Out. I'm going with your change argument. So just hear me out, okay? So 25 years, a lot of turmoil still in the country. Of uh, basically, of a lot of a lot of people are still racist. So at this time, I think that he's racist. In that photo. I think he is. 100%. I think he probably has racist feelings. I think he was brought up on racist feelings because his parents probably were, uh, had like some iffy parts. I'm not saying everyone did, obviously. There's a lot of good people. Um, at certain times, there were a lot of good people who wanted the change who were not being racist. So I think at that time, he was racist. I think he was a bad person. I think he had some predisposed beliefs on black people. And I think that's terrible. And I think he's wrong. And I think at that time, if that photo came out then... There were ramifications mm -hmm. and he should definitely, if he was like, obviously he's in high school, I don't know what you would do, but he should be punished at that point. Fast forward 30 years. If we're going with the change, right? He definitely probably changed. He probably realized he was an idiot. Maybe. He probably realized. Maybe. No, I'm not, I'm not saying if he did or not. But. I'm saying I'm just, I'm going for the hypothetical here of change. If we're a country that gives people second chances and allows change. And we're supposed to be able to go here and whatever you believe and live on, it's your right as an American, right? And whatever you want, if you want to give you a second chance, we do because we're that country, right? Mm -hmm. If he's changed, hopefully he did. And hopefully he realized how wrong he was about his predisposed notions. Hopefully he realized that there is no difference 
And they are not, black people are not worse at all. And hopefully he realized that he shouldn't have been a racist because that was wrong. And if he did, he's being given a check and second chance. That's what he's doing now. So digging up a 30-year-old photo is would be wrong if he's changed. I bet at the time that that photo happened, he was racist. I think he was a bad person. I think he had pre- excuse, uh, pre, uh, some notions beforehand that were wrong. I think he fast forward 30 years. I hope he's changed. And you hope that he, uh, he's realized that he was wrong. And digging up something from 30 years ago is just kind of, it's why would you do it? If you might have changed. If we're a land of second chances and we believe in that, right? And we believe that everyone makes mistakes. Why would you dig up something from 30 years ago? Yeah, I think, I, I think I, it was just, I think against everybody, allegations, whatever gets a story now is posted out against people from long ago just to get a story and just to get something to happen because that's what we like. We like drama in what's going on. No, that's spot on. I agree. Yeah. What, what do you think I was going for? You, you, you acted like I was going to say something crazy. Personally, I thought you were going to excuse it and say like 30 years ago is more like acceptable. No, or... well, well, no, obviously, <laughs> obviously most people were more open about what they did then. And um, it's no secret that back then people were racist and in a certain community that would happen. And if there was nobody who was black in that community, white people wouldn't judge it. Now we're different, obviously, and we're better different. It doesn't excuse what we did in the past. I understand why it happened. I understand what they were doing it for. They had different notions and they believed different things. It's still wrong. Obviously, you can look back and say, hey, that happened. But now it's changed and now everyone realizes that was a bad thing to do. It happens in every it happens everywhere. It happens in every country. It happens everywhere. There were some bad things in the past. Like you don't think Brazil looks back in a history and says, damn, we had slavery. And like that was awful. And that was a bad thing. Of course it does. Same way U.S. does. We look back. We're like, wow, we did some messed up stuff. Every country has that. And obviously that doesn't make it right for being in that time and doing it because we should know about morals and we right. should know what's right and wrong. Yeah. But, Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's correct because it's not. But if you want to call them out for something, don't do call them out. 30 years early. Do it 30 years earlier. Do it when that happens. But, if you want to call them out, do it then. Or but, at least even, even 10, I'll even agree 10 years later. You might be able to walk the line of 10 years later. Maybe. I'm not saying you can, but like 10 years is more acceptable than 30. But there, there's a lot of growth from him in high school till now. Exactly. He's a governor. That's, that's what I'm saying. He's a governor. Like I've said, I've said stuff, you've said stuff. Let's not Ever. pretend like we have, like we're all. Everyone's, every, everyone says something bad. Everyone does when they're kids. Just let always, always, always be careful what you post from this point forward because you will always be judged for it. Exactly. Um, nothing, what he, nothing about what he did was right. Nothing about it at all. It was terrible. It was a terrible thing he did. However, 30 years later, if we're doing second chances, he's allowed to grow. If somebody's saying, hey, call him out for it, he's a bad person, and you want to do that as a country, and you want to do that as people of this like nation, do that then. Fine. If you want to go for it, go for it. But think about it. If you did something bad, look back at the past and say, damn, I'm a bad person too. It goes both ways. It has to. If you did something bad 30 years ago, then you get punished for it as well. There's no, there's no ex- exceptions here. If I'm judging him, let's say I judged him, right? And I got to judge everything I've said as a kid. A yeah. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is if I'm telling him that 30, 30 years later that he has to resign because he said that 30 years earlier, then I should be in trouble for, if anything, if I said a lot of years earlier. Right. I'm saying, I'm saying it has to go all the way. Yeah. We agree. Yeah. It's, I don't know, man. It's, and, and you know, it happens everywhere. It's happening with all, all politicians. I'm just saying. As somebody who in the early days of doing stand-up relied on shock comedy, don't, I don't like to be judged. Well, well, it's different when you're on stage, though. There's comedians that do racist stuff on stages. There are certain comedians that do that, and they say it's jokes and it's just jokes, and like you can say that they're wrong, that they shouldn't say that, but that's what they're doing. I think um, context matters, too. 
some some guys coming to UB. Um, I forget his name. He's a real big stand-up comedian, and he's like, he's not racist. He's more just really like out there, and he'll say stuff that's messed up and he shouldn't say. And he'll be like, well, you know, I'm just making jokes. When I'm on stage, I'll talk about every single race, even white people. And I'll make jokes all the time because it doesn't matter because I'm on stage. And by the way, just on a side note, yeah, don't go to a show if you're going to be outraged. You can go on YouTube and search comedians before buying a ticket. If you don't like their stuff, don't buy a ticket. Because if you buy a ticket, you still support what they're saying. Yep, John Mulaney, by the way. That's the guy. Have you heard jokes by John Mulaney? I don't think so. They're pretty bad. Look him up sometime. He, he's funny. He's funny as hell. But he says some messed up stuff. He says it about everything, by the way. It's not just like race. It's religion. It's um, age. It's everything. He just makes fun of whatever. He doesn't care. He has no qualms about it. And like that, But that's the thing. There's a difference between entertainment and being an actual douche. You could be on stage and say some messed up stuff and then come off stage and be totally like non like mean about that. You could be like, yeah, I was just joking. It's a joke. That's what I do. It's their job. Framing matters too. Well, yeah, but it's, it's their job though. Just think about it. It's, it's their job to make people laugh. And if you like start censoring comedy, right, where, where, where are you going? They make suicide jokes on like comedian shows. Like they do. Doug you Stone, know, Doug Stone hopes, uh, the one where he talks about his mom. Oh, so good. Oh, my God, man. It's funny as hell, but it's messed up. <laughs> classic. Classic. That's one of the, one of the best stand-up sets ever. Oh, yeah. and, and by the way, it happens where everywhere, too. Um, Dave Chappelle, he makes racist jokes. And, you know, he's black. He makes fun of white people and black people, and he doesn't care. It's because it's his job. He goes on stage to do that. And he says it before he says the joke. He's like, I'm not racist. It's just my job. And then he does it. And that's just how he is. Chris Rock made a joke that said, um... Are you touching your computer right now? No, why? It's making some weird buzzing noise. It's not for me. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It stopped now, so we're good. Chris Rock made a joke that said the difference between niggas and niggers. Chris Rock (laughs) used the N-word on stage. Jesus. Yeah, Chris Rock's weird, man. Chris Rock's jokes, uh, he, he's, he's a weird guy. Um, one thing I want to touch on, by the uh, way, before we, before we end. I know we've been going for a long time. Yeah, we've been we going end, for almost two hours, so. Jesus Christ. Let's wrap it up. Fine, okay. I want to say one thing before we wrap up. Actually, yeah, you know what? Actually, no. Forget it. It's too long. We've been too long. We've been going on too long. No, you wrap it up. No, no, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it next show. We'll leave people in suspense. We'll talk about it next show. How about that? All right. Okay. Well, guys, this has been the John and Austin talk show. And we've been a while and we haven't done this in a while, but hopefully we'll be putting out more of this. I believe we will. Um, Don't forget DJ dog three K. He puts out stuff daily. He also has a daily fantasy thing where he throws out that stuff too. You should check it out. Awesome. He's amazing. Um, Go to the Google Player App Store and download the WASU app. Um, I am doing work for WASU in Boone. Um, Absolutely great team over there. I will be there every Saturday from 2 to 3 DJing. So you could also check me out there. Go support me. Go support the team. Download the app, get us to number one in the app store because we need help. And, uh, yep, that's it. Yeah, def- definitely do that. He does great stuff. Check it out. Check out his channels. Check out everything because he's honestly a great content creator. Um, I'm going to be doing some stuff on uh, my channel as well. Maybe I'll start talking about sports more. Maybe I'll start doing more videos. Um, it's kind of difficult hey, Johnny, the time. Maybe, yeah? we could, maybe we can make a little bit of music. Oh, hell yeah, man. I'm down. Okay. I'm down, yeah. We'll have stuff in the works, guys. Just remember, check out DJ Dog 3 k You subscribe. You hit that bell button. You do what you got to do to get his stuff on time all the time. Go check out the radio. He'll have it in the description, I bet, 100%. Also, check out my channel, Bird Bomb Gaming. Check that out. I'll put it in the description, too. Oh, well, that'll be on my channel, so that'll be dumb. But we'll talk about more stuff we're going to do. And, yeah, it's been a wonderful time, guys. We hope you enjoy. Anything to add, Austin? Um, no, that's it. Cool. 
Stay around, guys. It's been fun. As always, peace. Peace, love, and DJ Adoc. Peace. <laughs>